Dear students, now we will be moving from the global alignment towards the local alignment. Before we get into the local alignments, we need to understand why local alignments are important. So to begin with, you know that the DNA itself contains non-coding sequences as well as the coding sequences. So the non-coding sequences are not transcribed while the coding sequences are transcribed and uh, further translated into functional proteins. Now, if the non-coding regions are not coding for functional proteins, it means that there is a high chance of evolution in those nucleotides. Vice versa, if the coding regions are coding for proteins, there is a high chance that they will be conserved and therefore give us a good alignment. So as I just mentioned, that because non-coding regions are not uh, translating into functional counterparts, therefore there, there is a higher chance of their evolution and therefore they are less conserved. If you talk about the coding sequences, then they are coding for proteins and are tightly regulated and conserved by nature. So if you have two sequences, let's say two DNA sequences of coding regions, then there is a very high probability that you will have a very nice alignment. But if you do not have coding regions in the two sequences, that is they have non-coding regions, then the alignment will not be a good one as evolution would have led to a lot of mutations in the sequence. So if this is the case, then a local alignment will be useful. So if you have a long DNA sequence, which has some coding portion within it, then you are only interested in aligning the coding portion and you want to ignore the non-coding portions uh, to one side. So towards finding such coding regions or exons in the DNA, you need a strategy to do a local matching or a local alignment. So this is the reason why we're going to get into local alignments. So here in this example, I'm going to show you what the global alignment, local alignment and overlapped matches they lead to. So in case of global alignment, let's say you have sequence one here. Then the second sequence starts from the first position and concludes at the end. Here you have some gaps that are inserted. In case of overlap matches, so you have sequence 1 here. So you may have a sequence that is like that. So it has a leading edge. Or you may have a sequence that is completely within sequence number one. So in that case, the sequence number one will have both a leading as well as a trailing edge. Or there can be a third case where another sequence has a trailing edge. Now, the local alignment here helps you to give you the best matching portions within this sequence. So it is not essential that you start from the first amino acid or end at the last one. So in this way, the highly matching coding regions in case of DNA or in case of proteins, some domains, functional domains, can be very nicely aligned here. So in conclusion, the local alignments can help you to find exons. So if you have done a local alignment between two nucleotide sequences and there are portions which are matching very nicely with each other, 
then it means they may be coming from an exon. Similarly for proteins, if portions of two protein sequences are matching very nicely, then it can be said about them that they are part of a functional domain that is conserved in the two sequences.